All right, guys. So let's start. Introduction to quantifiers. At first, tell me what is proposition or statement? What is proposition or statement? Yes, what is proposition or statement? Sir, a statement which is true and false at the same time. So it has not true and false at the same time. It can have two value. One is true, another one is false, but not both at the same time. Now, for example, five is greater than six. So it is a proposition statement because it can be true or it can be false. But now if I write X is greater than X is greater than six. Is it a propositional statement? No. This one? No. Why it is not a proposition uh, statement? X is not defined. So we cannot say X is not defined. You cannot say if X right. So this kind. So it. So this the, the value of this statement. The value of this statements true false. Depends on the value of X. So that's why it is called open set open statement. X is called. A free variable and all allowable values of X is called universe or universe. of discourse so please remember this universe or universe of discourse is very important before solving any problem you have to define what is your universe or universe of discourse <clears throat> all right guys do you have any question no question now let's come back to here let's assume my universe is Integers. My universe is integers. What is integer actually? Can you tell me? Whole numbers. Whole numbers. So universe is nothing but zero plus one. minus one. Later, when we'll, when we'll start set theory, we'll deal much details with this sets. But right now, remember, it is something like this. zero plus minus one plus minus two plus minus three. This way, continue. Now, Let's take this open statement. My open statement is Okay, so what are the allowable values for X? What are the allowable value for x? Zero, uh, Zero plus minus one plus minus two. 
instead of x if i put one then what happened the statement becomes one is greater than six is it true or false false it's false again if i put instead of one if i put 10 then true now it becomes true it seems some values of x this open statement is true some values of x the open statement is false so to mitigate this kind of situation we have two quantifiers we have two quantifiers to denote this kind of situations so there are two quantifiers one is called sum there is sum one of the so on and there is another quantifier any all for all this two. Now, if you want to quantify this statement, x is greater than 6, using this universe of integers, then how can you quantify? Not for all values of x, this one is true. For some values of x, this statement is true. Am I right? Yes, sir. So this open statement can be written this way. Sum x, x is greater than 6. Did you get it? So this is the quantifier. So is it clear to you what is quantifier? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's take this one. Sir, basically, uh, sum quantifier to use for if x is... There is sum. one. There is one, at least one. There is one. At least one. So there is one to Bhujaga Ritla. Yes, there is one. At least one. Jodi ami actor jonno, if I can get true, that time I will write sum. On the other hand, for all values of the universe, if it is true, then I will write all. Okay, sir, got it. That's why it is also called, the all is called universal quantifier. It is called a specific quantifier. Okay? One is called universal quantifier, another one is called specifier, specific quantifier. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, let's take another example. Please remember, before quantifying anything or writing any open statement, universal, universe is, should be defined. Universe definition would be a must. Otherwise, it would not work. Now let's take this one. My universe is again integers. Let's assume something like this. <clears throat> this one okay okay here another point when we write let's come go back to here when we write a proposition how do we actually denote a proposition using using small letter p am i right small p small letter small p uh, small q sir, small r just wait for a second it's like blurry let it, it is bloody okay, okay now is it clear not yet yeah now it's clear okay so 
Propositional statement is denoted by small letters, small English letters, right? P, Q, R. Now, quantify uh, open statements. How can you define open statements? Can you tell me? Definitely, I will. I'm going to use P as it is a statement, but it also involves some very vari variable. So that's why after writing the statement notation, we are going to put a name of the variable in the bracket. Did you get it? So basically like functions. Let's say it is not called function, but the highest, the way we represent function, right? Because here variables is also concerned. That's why we have to put the entry for variable. Okay. So let's go back here. Let's assume my universe is integer and my statement is something like this p x x squared greater or equal to zero all right so how can you quantify this from algebra we know that any value a where a is an integer a square is greater or equal to zero am i right yes sir whenever we take any integer the summation the square of that integer is always greater or equal to zero am i right yes sir that means this statement this statement for this universe is always always true so we can write all x x square greater or equal to zero all right uh sir all x greater or equal to zero it is when a rokom statement thakle eigulo to amar propositional statement er motoi hoye jacche because amar after after using after using universe and quantify quantifier it becomes a propositional statement it acts like a propositional statement but without quantifier and without universe it does not work like a propositional statement Oh, acha sir. So the difference between propositional statement and open statement is that propositional statement requires the universe, whereas uh, the open statement does not. No, no, ultra. You are taking talking the reverse one. Propositional statement does not need any universe, yes, but sir. open yes. statement needs the universe to be become a propositional statement. Yes, sir. My bad. I just messed it up. And and you have to quantify because not all values. If you don't quantify, then it is not clear. For other values, what is happening? Am I right? Uh, but sir, like when for I example, in this case, if for example, in this case, if I don't quantify, then what happens? Universe is integer and x is square greater or equal to zero. Then your reader might ask, is it actually for all values in the universe or some values in the universe? Got it, sir. Did you get it? Yes, sir. Thank you. When you define the universe, then if you write the open statement, then your reader might ask you, is it true for all the values in the universe or some values of the universe? That's why this one is equally important. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Now let's do some problem. Let's assume my Px is Right now, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, see, universe is integers. My px is x greater or equal to 0, qx is x square greater or equal to 0, rx is x minus 3x minus 5 equal to 0, 
S X is X Q minus T Gaudi equal to zero. Let's do some problems. How about this? Quantify this statement. P X implies Q X. How can you quantify this statement? How can you quantify this statement? When this would become false? When this would become false? So when x is negative. Yes. P x is one. P x is one and. Uh, Q x is zero. P Q at that time only it is false. That means somehow it is become zero. This one become one. That time it is false. Now Q x is false. What is the meaning of this? Q x is false means. X uh, square get equal to zero. That is not. That means x square is smaller than zero. Am I right? Yes, and what is one? What is one? This one means x greater equal to zero. But we know that whenever x greater equal to zero, x square is not smaller than zero. Am I right? Just previous example. So it can never be false. Am I right? Yes. Sir. So what would be the quantifier? Yeah. All x. Am I right? Yes, sir. Let's do number B. Sir, so basically, I'm uh, wrong. 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 But on no good, the strategy is different. How about this? QX and RX. How about this? Sorry, Tell me. Some hobby. Q X and R X. Acha. When it this become false? When any of them is false. Any one of them is false. Either this one is zero or this one is zero. Now what is Q X? X square greater or equal to zero. Yeah. Am I right? Yes. Sir. And for any integer, X square is always greater than or equal to zero. So it is always true. It is a tautology. Am I right? Yes. How about this? This one, Rx is true for x equal to 3 and x equal to 5, right? x minus 3 into x minus 5 equal to 0 means x equal to 3 and x equal to 5. Am I right? Yes. So it is true for only x equal to 3 and x equal to 5, right? Yes, sir. For other values, x not equal to 3 or x equal to 5, what is the status of this statement? Uh, it's false. It is false. Then what happened? Is it for all these two both are true? No. no. So sum x, qx, rx. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's go to next example. Let's do this. Essex. How about this? SX says X is square greater or equal to 3. Okay? So is it true for all the values in the universe? No. For which value it is false? 1. 1. Yes, 1. Rest of the values, 0 and 1. Because our universe is, our universe is integer. 0 and 1, this one is false. 
For other values, it is true. So it is not always true. It is not always true. So x equal to 0, 1, this one is false. How about this, Rx? How about Rx? Rx is true. Rx is true. Rx is true. Rx is true. Other values, it is false. So, not equal to x equal to 3 or x equal to 5, it is false. So, definitely, what would be the quantifier? What would be the quantifier? Sum. Sum. Okay, guys. So we are getting pretty clear. Now, let's talk about this. Yes. What, what happened? I don't get you. What happened? What happened? Okay, negation of controversy. So let's say something like this. Okay. Done, guys? No, sir. Still, it is not clear? No, sir. How about now? How about now? No improvement. No improvement. Did you make your resolution 720? Yes, sir. How about the both? Send and receive both. Yes, sir. Why don't you yes, why don't you make the receive on the 720? And make sand 320, 360. Damn, sir, doesn't help. Does not help? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I okay. So, negation of quantifiers. Let's go to negation of quantifiers. For a universe, all x, p, x. What is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this? P, x is true for all values of x in universe. Now, what is the negation of this? What is the negation of this? Px is false for, uh, is not. Px is not true. Px is not true 
for all values of x in the universe. Then how can you represent it using quantifier? Tell me. How about this? Sum x, px. Are they equivalent? Are they equivalent or not? Huh? Yes, sir. So it means not all values px is true. Am I right or not? Not all values px is true or not true. Am I right? This is the meaning of this. Not all values px is true. So it is same like for there is some value for which px is false. Am I right? Am I right or not? Tell me. Come on. Guys? Yes. We're on the last part. Yes. Px is not true for all values of x in the universe. Another way we can say there is some value for which px is false. Am I right or not? So, remember, not all x, px, it is equivalent to whenever. So, we are trying to move the not symbol in the inside. So, whenever it encounters any all x, it would become some x and there will be a not sign, just import of px. Okay? So, same way, we can also prove sum x, px, not, this is equivalent to all x, not px. Then, all x, not px, not, this is nothing but sum x, px. And, sum x not px is equivalent to equivalent to all x px all right guys so that is the these are the negation formulas remember it is time to move inside if it is time to move inside all becomes sum and sum becomes all and whatever happens inside that is the that is the technique to remember so let's do one problem let's try to do this problem negate the following statement. Okay, we are trying to negate this statement. So how can we negate this statement? This is nothing but not all x, px or qx implies rx. This is nothing but sum x not px or us rx then then tell me what can i do what can i do guys what can i do Is the picture clear to you guys? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Then what can I do? What is the next step? 
I can use the definition of implies sum x not. Then what is the definition of implies? What is the definition of implies? Not. So we know that p implies q is nothing but not p or q. Am I right? So it is nothing but not. Px union Px Qx or Rx. Rx. Then sum x not not double negation. It would become Px Qx. This will become and this will become not using the margin. Ah, uh, Dam Morgan and Davon method double. This one is definition. So done. This is the simple structure. Is there any question you can ask? No question. No sir. Okay, let's do another problem. Instead of one free variable, if there are two variables, then how can we represent? How can we represent? Let's assume this. Universe is integer. Then let's assume my Px. Px is x is oh, sorry. My statement, open statement is p s p x square y square equal to uh, let's say twenty five. Let's say twenty five. Let's say. So in this case, in this case, my open statement depends on two variables. Am I right? My open statement depends on two variables. So we can represent this p x comma. Okay, guys. Now, if you want to quantify this, how can you quantify? How can you quantify this? Uh, x square plus y square. X square plus y square equal to forty one. When x and y are integers, when it can be possible? If x equal to five, y equal to four, or or x equal to four, y equal to five. Is there any other value you can make this to forty one using no. integers? No. So. X has only two values. Y has only two values. So we can write this. Way. We have to quantify both. Sum x, sum y. X squared plus y squared equal to forty. In shorthand, and they are like this. You can also write sum x comma y. X squared plus y squared equal to forty. Did you get it? Yes, sir. You can even distribute this. How can you distribute? This only depends on x. This only depends on y. Okay, so you can write this way: sum x, x square plus sum y, y square equal to forty. All these are same. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. So this is the concept of nested quantifier. This is the concept of nested quantifier. So. Let's do a one more negation.
नेगेट We have to negate this. So how can you negate this? How can you negate this? What would be the first step? So we have to find out not all x some y p x q x r x or px not q qx okay so this is a logical equivalent to sum x sum x all y not the whole step then this is logically equivalent to sum x all y. We can take common px. Am I right? Using law of distribution. Law of distribution. So it is nothing but px. Then qx rx or not qx and not rx am i right cool. now this is nothing but sum x all y px or it is nothing but distribution this is by definition now you can apply the margal law here so it is nothing but Qx not Rx or not Qx or Rx. All right, the Morgan. Then, then what happened if you consider the whole thing, this part as P? This one is not P. So P or not P. What is the case? P or not P? P or not P? P or not P? What is the value? The P. P or not P? What is the value? Sir, true. true. Tautology. Yes, you are right. Tautology. Tautology. So it becomes sum x all y px or t naught. Again, what is this one? What is the law? What is the name of this law? What is the name of this law? Okay, inverse. Is it inverse? Something also, sir. I also follow. Don't worry. So again, px and not t naught. What is this one? This one is also tautology. So the whole thing become tautology. This is the proof. Did you get it? So it would be always true, no matter what is the value of x or y. 
Dan Did you get it? Get the point? right? not the whole statement oh achha, achha, achha. then i have taken the distribution part outside done yes sir okay then rest of the thing is pretty, pretty, pretty clear all right guys should we move to next one uh yes sir Okay, just remember this law. You can prove also. Sum x, sum x, p x, or q x. What is the meaning of this? Sum x, p x, or q x. What is the meaning of this? There is all at least one value for which this one is true. Am I right? So yeah. this one means sum x. P x is true or sum x Q x is true, but not the reverse one. This one is not true. Okay, so it is one way. Why it is one way? Because for sum x, if the inner statement is true, at least one of the statement is true. But if one of the statement is true, then what happens? If one of the statement is true, then what happened? Uh, the whole thing. Sir, both the version. I will pull the. Then, this one is also true. Am I right? Yes, sir. For sum x, if the inner statement is true, that means either sum x p x is true or for sum x q x is true. Now, sum will who? If p x is true, or some value q x is true, then definitely for some x, the inner statement is true. Am I right? Because one statement is true is enough to prove the inner statement is true. Am I right? So both are this one. Now let's go to this one. Some x. What is the case? For sum x, p x and q x are true. Okay. For sum x, p x and q x are true. Definitely, it means sum x, p x is true, and sum x, q x is true. But it is not reverse. Why not? For sum x, p x is true. Some other values, q x might be true. Then, of course, not. Sum x both are true. Am I right? So it is one. Now take this one. All x, p x, and q x. Definitely all x, p x, and all x, q x. Now, if for all x p x is true, and for all x q x is also true. Definitely for all x, both are true. So it is both. Are. It is again both. Are. Okay? Yes. The last one, last one is like this. 
Alex. Okay, if all x px is true or all x qx is true, definitely for all x the inner statement is true because to prove inner statement, proving one is enough. But for all statement px and qx true does not means for all statement both are true because this might be true for some value, this might be true for another some value. So it is not reversible. All right, guys. So these are the laws. Did you get it? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's do some problem with this. Prove that. Okay, so we have to prove this. For some x, not px implies qx. For some x, px implies rx. For some x, rx implies sx. Some x, not sx. You have to prove that. You have to prove that. You have to prove that for some x, qx. How can you prove that one? How can you prove that one? Let's take this one and this one. Some x, px implies rx. Some x, rx implies sx. Using this two, what do we get? For some x, px implies sx. Law of syllogism. Right? Yes, then, this one can be also written. Some x, not sx, 
implies not px how contrapositive now is sum x sx sum x sum x is not sx so what can we get not sum x sum x not px using modus using modus ponens then finally we get sum x not px implies qx so we get sum x qx what is the rule what is the rule again modus ponens done the done so this is the almost end of the logic so logic this is almost end of the logic i am going to define some last few things then we are going to conclude do you have any question you can ask me guys do you have any question uh, sir modus ponens ta jodi ekbar to review korten bhalo hoto mane modus ponens ta ekbar review kortam mane only the modus ponens ha uh, yeah, modus ponens e eta ami e ti modus ponens ekhane kon ta bujhte parcho na which part like is it not px equals qx or like what is modus what is modus ponens etai ami parar gola fer barar bhule jai what is modus ponens p and p in plus q in plus q so this is called modus ponens or p p in plus q q this is called modus ponens am i right Yes, sir. It becomes a tautology. So this is called modus ponens. The same thing. Let's consider it is something like this. Not px, not px in plus qx. So this this cancel out, we get qx. Is it clear to you? Just do this way. Uh, it will be helpful. Okay, uh, okay. Now, it is not a major problem. Just actually how to do the math. Am I right? Yes, okay sir. when i have started so actually whenever i started the logic class i i have told you that like arithmetic operators precedence logical operator has also precedence okay so let's talk about the precedence and we we'll conclude the logic tomorrow we will start new topic that is actually circuit precedence and associativity of logic operators so we know that uh, whenever plus minus star and division in a single statement which one we do first let's say so we have 1 plus 2 star 3 which one we do first 2 into 3 so we say star and division has higher precedence than plus or minus So this is called precedence. And how about this? Whenever I have two multiplication, we have multiplication just before three and just after three. Which one would we do first? Which one would we do first? Which one would we do first? ट and these are actually left associative that means whenever there are multiple operations on the both side we do the left side first the same way logical operator has some precedence what is the precedence of logical operator and comes first precedence of logical operators number 1 is not highest precedence 
Number two is and, third is or, fourth is implies and bidirectional has equal precedence. Okay, and this is the precedence. And are right associated. Okay, they are right associated. So there, there is a difference. Two into three into four. Jamon left take account for it. So if we if we write this way, not P, not P, or Q and R. So what would be the expression using bracket? What would be the expression? We'll do this one first. Then we're going to do this one. Then finally we'll go do this one. Did you get it or not? Yes, sir. This is the highest precision, so we are going to do first, then this one, then finally this one. Remember, this is the associativity. Double leg one high, the leg one low. Arekta day, last. Ekane kore day. Chetao chamjo de eta leki. P or Q or R. Which one I am going to do first? This one I'm going to do first, then I'm going to do this one first. Because it is left right associated. Okay, guys. Do you have any more question? You can ask me. So this is the end of logic plus. Any more question? No, sir. No question? Come on, you can ask me question if you want. So, all right, guys, this is the end of logic. From tomorrow, we'll just start the new branch of mathematics and very important branch in discrete mathematics, set three. Before leaving, let's take your attendance. All right, guys, do, do you have any more question? If you don't have question, then I'm leaving today. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye. Bye, sir. Bye. Salam.